Today we are attempting to cross the whole country with our KMs by using the mountains. We also saw some epic locations at this adventure. Hey guys, check out the view on the left. So you're wondering what is the plan for today? Well, we're in a rush to cross the whole country with these buggies. And since we're in short on time, I have to capture as much footage as possible with the limited time we have. Since we only have the weekend to do it, we have to cover as much ground as possible. We will be traveling above 250 kilometers in the beautiful Bosnia Herzegovina. First we meet up at my friend's house, suit up and pack all the supplies. Everything's packed and ready, we can get the adventure started. I will be driving with Turkey today. I just need to strap myself in first. I'm always struggling with that. All strapped in, now we can go. First checkpoint is Blitinje Lake. This lake is the biggest natural lake in Bosnia Herzegovina and is the reason the park got its name. And the drive will be approximately 30 minutes. So let's sit back and enjoy the ride. Guys in front of us were giving so much gas, we were getting bombarded by stones. Sir Kid did his best to avoid the stones coming at us. As we arrived at the lake, we got to meet all the guys that were joining us on this trip. And I had no idea that one of the guys was into fashion. And he's gonna show us what you should be driving a Can-Am in. <laughs> <laughs> I had to tell him that his slippers look so damn good. As we were waiting for other guys to arrive, Igor took Zvone for a rip around the lake. Before we continue with the adventure, we were thinking of taking a picture for all of us together for something to remember the adventure about. So we came up with the idea to do it inside of the lake. Man, I hate the rain. Every time you want to have a good time with your friends, rain messes it up. So we quickly took a picture of us together and we headed out. So we started to head out of the lake. <laughs> Look at our wheels. Are we gonna drive like this? It was starting to rain worse and worse. And since we don't have windows in our buggy, we start to get really, really wet. Oh man, it's raining so bad. We just started the trip and it's already raining. It's crazy. I even got water inside of my beer, which is really pissing me off. It was just pouring out there. So we stopped and tried to figure out what we're gonna do next. Just continue straight forward and hope that it stops raining or try to seek shelter. But after checking the weather report, it looked like it was gonna rain all night. So we decided to head up to one of our cabins and stay there for the night. First, I have to show you how dirty the buggy <laughs> is. I haven't even started the trip. The guys barbecued during the day and we spent the night. We woke up to this beautiful morning, the day was just perfect. We had no idea that today was the day we would almost go into a minefield. Yeah, I'm not joking. You see the warning side in the middle of the tree and this was scary. But not only that, I will also be flying the FPV today. We were at day 2 of the adventure and traveled only 50 kilometers out of 240. We have to get going if we're gonna travel the whole country with the buggies. Hey guys, we need to get off the asphalt. Take a left here and let's get going towards the mountains. Let's head over to Rama Lake. The guys are super happy to be on the dirt road so they can finally start ripping it. Once 
once we get on top of this mountain, I'm gonna launch the FPV drone and chase the buggies. This is my view from the buggy. I'm gonna attempt to fly the FPV from inside of here. Tried off yesterday, we're wet again. Shit. But it is fun though driving in these buggies. <laughs> Here we'll make a short pit stop just to show you the location before we head out to the top of the mountain. This is Rama Lake, one of the most beautiful lakes in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I highly recommend you check it out. That's enough for a pit stop, let's get going to the top of the mountain and let the drone rip. The road towards the top had no barriers and Igor said if you go out the cliff you won't stop rolling until you get down to the lake. Just look at this. So I asked Jelia to take it easy up the hill, cause this looks so unsafe. As we were going up the hill, we met a car on the way. Jelia was saying he was gonna pass him, and I was thinking... No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Jelia found a small gap and just passed him without any problems. These guys love driving buggies, so asking them to take it easy is basically impossible on such a nice road. Even though it looks scary, I feel quite safe. So we're the first one on the top of the mountain, so we have to wait for the rest of the guys before I start to fly the FPV from inside of the buggy. So I'm telling them to wait until I fire up the drone, it's gonna be so much fun. I'm so nervous cause the insurance on my drone just went out. I hope I don't crash it. Everything's set up and ready, so let's go. Cirque is gonna be our navigation and tell us when the turn's coming up and which turn it is. And that's the drone up there floating on the right side. We are in the front of the lines and I'm flying the F3 from inside of this first buggy. From the air it looks calm and easy to fly, but once you got into the buggy it's a whole other ball game. It wasn't that bad flying the drone right here when it was nice and flat, but once we hit the corner it was almost impossible to keep the drone in the air. I barely managed to avoid the trees and bushes right here. down as I was hitting corners at full speed while I was trying to turn around in the drone I almost hit the tree right there so I'm literally sitting and flying inside of this buggy and these are the speeds we're traveling in and that I'm flying the drone from look where I'm flying through now right between there I almost crashed again Right about now I started to feel really sick, I almost felt like I'm gonna puke all over the guys. As we were entering the woods again there was a lot more trees, so I almost hit it like once, twice, three times. And I pulled up just to get away from the trees. After so many close calls I decided to land my drone before I crash it. Igor was saying he didn't know this was possible, I me mean, neither to be honest. So let's get going toward the rest of the trip and the minefield. But 
but before we could get going we met some woodcutters and we had problems squeezing by. The buggies went by pretty quickly but the jeep was much wider. So we got some help from the woodcutters barely squeezing by. The road is becoming more challenging, so we're taking it slowly. As we're climbing up the mountains, everybody getting up there. Manda and Darko was the first one in the buggies. As we were going up, Darko met us and he stepped on right up the road and said, don't go any further. Now there's mines up there, man. So we got out of the car and discussed what we we're gonna do. And Zhelia had suggested that we should set one guy up there. Igor had a look and showed us that it literally says mines ahead. Warning from the federal government. <laughs> This is no joke. So we had a look with the drone to figure out exactly where the mines are and when the road was. And Igor told us exactly where it is. So we figured out that the mines were towards the right side. So we used the drones to check exactly where the mines are so we don't step into it. We also saw there's a road that has been used by other cars. So we're sure there's no mines at the roads. So we're continuing forward. So good, no mines exploding. So we managed to get up to the top of the mountain. Being stressed out as we were works up the appetite. So the guys start to prepare us to eat. I found it so interesting that they managed to turn their jeep into a basically an oven. <laughs> And they prepared us some food to eat. There's nothing like eating sausages at the top of the mountain after surviving going through a minefield. <laughs> or close to the minefield. After relaxing, having some food and some drinks, it was time to jump into the buggies and head toward Shipovo, which will be our final destination and where we will pitch a tent. Honestly, I haven't pitched a tent in like 20 years. So it's nice to get out from the modern life and get out from the comfort zone. I just hope it's not gonna be too cold at night. But first, we need to get off this mountain. Meanwhile, we can enjoy this beautiful view. Bosnia and Herzegovina is such a beautiful country. Like, look at the locations we are blessed with. It's so damn beautiful. The road coming down the mountains were quite challenging. As we were climbing down, we had to stop to take in the breathtaking views. As we got off the mountain, we had to use asphalt roads to get to the next section of the trip. Usually we only stick to off-road terrain as it's better for our cannabis. And we ensure that our rides are always adventurous, so we got off the asphalt road as soon as possible. And back to the fun part. As we were renting the woods again, Emil asked me if I wanted to join him in the Can-Am. I had no idea that he drives like a total fucking maniac. As everybody was speeding through the forest, it didn't take long before we came at the end of it. As we were so close to our final destination, Shipovo, we stopped for a small bathroom break. And we saw one of the most beautiful natures I've seen in my life. Just look at this. We're finally arriving at the destination where we will set up camp and spend the night. So we quickly need to park our canems, our jeeps and everything and set up tent before the night sets in. And this is Nikic, he's our parking sensor. He signals us when to Come stop. <laughs> that was like the best parking sound ever. <laughs> Nikic, tell the jeep when to stop. Come this guy is a legend, I love this guy. Where everybody's unpacking their tents, there's me over there having a beer. Anti-head helpful. <laughs>
I'm just kidding, I had to help out. Can't have them set up all the tents. Zwona has way more experience than two of us setting up tents. So we have traveled for 120 kilometers with our buggies. Travel almost the whole country with buggy. Plan is to spend the night here and then drive back to Mostar tomorrow, another 120 kilometers. Tomorrow I'll be driving back with Igor and he is the fastest driver here. And Igor drives so damn fast that I fell asleep from the exhaustion. Igor even recorded me sleeping. <laughs> And tomorrow I also attempted to fly the FPV from inside of this buggy, but I failed, I crashed my drone. Now we're gonna do some barbecuing, get some sleep and get ready for the trip back tomorrow. So let's put on some Balkan music and enjoy the night. Not everybody likes this kind of music. Remember Galic, the guy who started the trip with the slippers? Well, he's still wearing them. And we were trying to take a picture of it, he woke up. <laughs> Emil was also telling some jokes. <laughs> we had a few beers and traveled a lot, so we found everything funny. Emil was such a legend because he kept telling jokes all night. We got so tired that we fell asleep around the fire. And I woke up in the middle of the Look night. Where I'm sleeping. Outside there's more of us. I'm keeping this fire going so we don't freeze. After surviving the cold night, we were woken up by a small cat who were lost and arrived at our camp. Bachi took really good care of her. After cuddling with the cat for a bit, we decided to leave it in a safe space before we continue back to Mostar. The rest of the guys packed all, all the stuff and prepared the jeeps to get back. We refueled all our tires to check the safety, so picked up all the garbage and left for Mostar. 120 kilometers back. In the way back, I joined Igor driving the buggy at full speed. Igor is really one remarkable driver. Just look at the speed we're traveling in. Total insanity. He passed every jeep and every can -M that he came across and continued speeding down the road. But we made sure that we were safe because there was always a car or a can -M at top of the road a few kilometers up making sure that nobody passes us on the way so we don't have an accident. We always prioritize safety. We stopped at this stone to refill our can -Ms and continue forward. Our tire was also a bit flat so we used the jeep to refill the air again. Driving at these speeds sure does use a lot of gasoline. So everything refuel and ready, so we just need to get back to Mostar. We're gonna do a bit more speeding and then I'm gonna attempt to fly the drone from inside of here. As we were getting closer and the speed started to slow down, this is when I actually fell asleep. I couldn't take it no more, honestly it was just way too much adrenaline for me. And this is where Igor filmed me and sent to the guys that I was falling asleep in a can M. And then he woke me up at the final stage where I chased him on a gravel road. The guys closed off the street as we were attempting to do this. I was setting up the drone, putting it in manual mode, and I was telling Igor, so let's go. As we were leaving, my angle was too high up, and I didn't give it enough gas, so I crashed even before we started. So I went to pick up the drone and see if it's gonna fly again. So Igor told me that we're blocking off the road for the rest of the people for way too long, so let's just do it from the ground.
So here are a few pictures from the trip and everybody involved.